So welcome back to the news for the week ending June 15th, 2012. Starting off with some dramatic news, which is rather awesome. The final member of the Aum Shinrikyo cult has finally been arrested, and appropriately enough, near a manga cafe. Uh, Katsuya Takahashi was the final suspect in the Aum Shinrikyo uh, sarin gas attacks from back in the 90s, uh, and he's been a fugitive for 17 years finally was arrested because he drank in an area near a manga cafe where he did not have to show uh, identification. And, uh, but somebody noticed him and reported him to police. And um, he made a, no attempt to resist arrest, but he's finally been arrested. Uh, this was the very bizarre cult that released sarin gas in Japanese, uh, the Japanese subway system and uh, killed a number of people and was one of the reasons why Evangelion actually had some issues with Thus, the tie-in is that there was a very similar storyline going that was planned for Evangelion when this happened. And it's one of the reasons why the storyline for Evangelion switched around. So, uh, the, so the final suspect has been arrested and will hopefully face justice for that horrible, horrible uh, uh, attack in 1995. So, moving on to uh, slightly nicer news in. Uh, back here in America, uh, Otaku USA magazine will now be in Walmart instead of Shonen Jump. So Shonen Jump has, of, co of course, ended, and Walmart's announced, or it has been announced, that Otaku USA will assume Shonen Jump's place in Walmart store shelves starting July 31st. So you'll be able to, uh, to buy that in Walmart, which is pretty darn nice. Let's see here. Uh, also in Jump News, over in Japan... Shueisha, Shueisha has announced a new magazine called Young Jump, uh, which will be a uh, uh, basically a spin-off, uh, I'm sorry, a, a new website called Tonari no Young Jump, which is a spin-off of Weekly Young Jump. And it'll start with a manga by the creator of iShield 21, Yusuke Murata. And there'll be a new Magical Girl manga series in there, as well as a bunch of other things. And they're going to be releasing new material every week. So, I'm sorry, new stuff every day, with a new series every week. So it's kind of a neat idea. Instead of releasing a whole bunch of stuff every week, they'll, they'll introduce a new series every week and you'll get uh, those, those new issues, essentially, of different series every day. Kind of a neat idea. So we'll see how that goes. Let's see here. Meanwhile, still in Japan, Nana Mizuki, a rather well-known voice actress over in Japan, has, uh, uh, has actually broken a record. Her 27th single, Time Space EP, was released on June 6th and placed on the third uh, on its first week in the charts to become her 17th top 10 single overall and her 16th in a row. And that makes her the, uh, uh, that gives her the record for top 10 singles amongst anime voice actors. Most ever, now beating out Megumi Hayashibara for that honor. So she's, that's pretty impressive. This makes her 14th single in a row in the top five. Wow, pretty amazing. So uh, the single includes a Metro Baroque, the theme song for Blood Sea, and uh, a, a song called Space Time Sapphire used in a, in a commercial by Rintaro. So good for Nana Mizuki. Uh, top notch voice actress there. Pretty, pretty cool. Let's see here. Uh, in kind of weird news over in Japan, uh, there's some, it, it, well, at the International Tokyo, Tokyo Toy Show, there were some rather large figurines. And let me see if I can show that to you here real quick. Um, if you like Pretty Cure, yeah, here are some life-size uh, Pretty Cure figurines that were shown at International Tokyo Toy Show. Wow, pretty pretty darn amazing. Uh, they're also going to release some uh, cosmetic compacts with real makeup based on the show, so that's kind of amazing. Um, in other kind of weird news, Linkin Park is getting their own Nendoroids. I'm not joking. This is what they look like. That's right, Linkin Park Nendoroids. Just weird and awesome, but that's that kind of describes Japan pretty well, doesn't it? Let's see what else. Uh, a couple other weird things. An Evangelion horse racing TV ad came out this week in Japan. The Japan Racing Association basically had some commercials done uh, themed around Evangelion 
Katono Mitsuishi, the voice um, actress who plays Misato, narrates the commercials. Very weird things. And so there's an Evangelion tie-in to horse racing. Imagine that. Also in Singer News, uh, tying in with Nana Mizuki, Tomohisa Yamashita, also known as Yamap, a Japanese singer and actor, will appear in Toriko playing himself. They've actually created a character for him in Toriko, and he will be showing up in the anime series. It's kind of a neat idea, actually, to make those characters actually show up in the series. Let's see here. I think the final thing on the list, yes, that's right, is the really weird lawsuit between ADV and Funimation. Um, so basically, there's been this, this lawsuit going... Well, the Funimation sued ADV because ADV had a bunch of series <clears throat> that they that Funimation took over and that ADV didn't... Funimation alleged ADV didn't give them all the material for. And so Funimation is basically saying, you know, we can't do anything with this stuff until you give us over all of our stuff. ADV has filed a counterclaim in, in uh, this lawsuit. Uh, and they have basically asserting that this is, quote, the culmination of Funimation's illicit scheme designed to obliterate competition in the market for Japanese anime, claiming that, quote, Funimation is or is dangerously close to becoming a monopolist, end quote. Yeah. Um, they claim that Funimation's original claims, quote, are a baseless attempt to drive out competition and Funimation should be held accountable for its actions, end quote. So they're basically claiming that, uh, oh, here we go. Funimation has violated the Federal Sherman Act and the Texas Free Enterprise Act, so ADV claims. They're monopolists in various downstream and upstream markets for Japanese anime, attempting to achieve a monopoly, blah, 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 blah. Yeah, uh, Funimation has, uh, uh, has responded by saying, quote, We believe these kind of claims are frivolous and will soon be dismissed. Funimation is obviously not a monopoly, has not sought a monopoly, and has never been in violation of antitrust laws. Rather, these claims are brought in a transparent attempt to gain leverage in the case because the defendants lack any defense to Funimation's original claims, which sounds about right. I mean, certainly Funimation is the dominant player, but the idea that they are uh, illegally uh, um, trying to become a monopoly or that they are a monopoly is kind of ridiculous. So we'll see how it turns out in court. But that's where that currently is. Kind of sad, but that's sometimes the way things are. So thanks for watching. I will see you next week.